"'Twas the night before campaign three, and all through the house not a critter was sleeping, not even the solo critters or the beacon bits. But the alarms were set by the bed with care, in the hopes that Fox Machina would soon be there. The critters were nestled all snug in their beds, while visions of fire-breathing dragons danced in their heads including my second insight check into season three of The Legend of Ox Machina. Now this is written from the perspective of a critter who was here to see the original campaign unfold, and one whose job it is to create narratives for brave adventurers to explore. So be forewarned, this will contain spoilers for The Legend of Ox Machina moving through season three and to the end of season whatever Amazon let them get. Many people say six or seven, but let's just be grateful whatever we get. Enjoy the ride, folks. One day, this story will end. But today is not that day. A day of shattered dreams when the age of critical role comes crashing down. But it is not this day. This day we insight by all that you hold dear on this good Exandria. I bid you get comfy critters and sally forth with me once more time. <laughs> we have been looking at this all wrong. Simply looking at the original campaign and the order it was aired will not let us foresee this. We must look at the plot side by side. There are two main plots here. First and foremost, the Chroma Conclave. Four, or three, now ancient chromatic dragons, or variegated as Percy called it, who are doing the whole tyrant dragon thing, eating people, collecting gold. Sure, we get that. It's D&D &D after all. But second is the story of the Briarwoods and the Whispered One. Now, we've been expecting one to end and the other to start, as it did in the campaign. But what if they ran these plots concurrently at the same time, slightly moved some of the key elements of the plot to add extra intrigue? Now, the cast have already said that they'd love to leave Easter eggs for the Critical Role fans who saw the original show. But this is Sam and Travis at the helm of the plot room, the ones who pulled off some of the biggest long cons ever. Now we have to gather vestiges, kill dragons, and our big reveal to the Briarwood Return and the Whispered One. Overlapping these allows a far greater complexity of the plot. Imagine what that might look like with Raishan working with Ripley and the Whispered One for a cure to Raishan's illness. It's almost ideal since we've already seen Delilah seeking a cure for Silas with the Whispered One. It's like they saw it all along, and they planned it all this time. So, Season 3 ends with the death of Vorigal. Season 4 ends with the death of Thordak. And Season 5 ends with the Whispered One finale, in which we get to see the final Raishan battle too. One dragon per campaign, one dragon per season. Now, many vestiges would be gathered along the way, and many adventures yet to be had. But I think that makes far more narrative sense than ending the Conclave arc and then starting the Whispered One arc. What do you think, Critters? With only hours to go before the Season 3 release, how do you feel about the journey so far? Now, if you want to play D&D with me, join my D&D channel. And if you want to see more table to screen and Campaign 3 highlights, sub to this channel. We love you very much. Is Season 3 out yet?